Okay, we're going to get started here today. So thanks for joining everybody. And I will open up some questions as uh, time goes on. And I just want to make sure I get everybody muted here. So you could, you know, don't have to be so quiet in your rooms <laughs> that you're in or in the car or wherever you are. So, all right. Today, we're going to continue on with the legal pitfalls, uh, especially with social media. And I'm going to touch on a few different topics here, just stuff that you post, stuff that other people can post on yours, uh, a little bit of MLS rules that uh, agents should be following. Also, just about advertising yourself in general about being an agent. So the first thing as a broker and having and uh, done this for over 20 years and well, social media hasn't been the way it has been in 20 years. <laughs> so not uh, when I started the brokerage before social media, you know, when dinosaurs roamed to earth, um, the, a lot of things have changed, especially with marketing yourself. So the one thing that is so common that I deal with, with talking with agents. And when I'm explaining to them, hey, you gotta do this and that, and this and that. First thing agents usually say, and I'm always ready for it. Well, I've seen other agents do this. And so why do they get away with it? I always say this, I use these examples. It's like, well, it's kind of like speeding. You see people speed all of the time. They're breaking the law. You're not supposed to speed. Do they get caught all the time? No. Does that give you the right to go speed? If you, all of a sudden the police officer pulled you over for speeding, you're not going to say, hey, well, that agent, that person over there, this person in front of me was speeding. Well, they didn't catch them. So certain things technically in Ohio Division of Real Estate, you can look these up and don't quote me on these because they could have changed it all over. Some of these uh, violations could be a $1,000 fine, could be um, you have to do more continuing education, could be a suspension of your license, could be if it was bad enough, could they could revoke your license or uh, suspend your license. So there's things that, that and you don't want to be the one that that's, they happen to catch you uh, for doing something wrong. So I do my best as a broker to educate the agents as best I can, not just, and, and to be very cautious about what you uh, post, what you show and follow the laws. And of course, the division of real estate, or let's say the Ohio um, Association of Realtors has a legal hotline. So you could check with them. And I always tell agents to check with them because I know as much as I know and see and, and watch, but it's always get kind of directly from the board of realtors that we pay money for. <laughs> so you could ask them their legal opinion about a, um, that's part of their job as our union, our board of realtors to, to proof stuff for us and give us their opinion as our board of realtors. You can always do that too. So some things, let's, let's start with social media and just yourself, just yourself of how you post yourself. You're supposed to, no matter when you're advertising yourself as a realtor, you're supposed to be putting yourself as a realtor and your company name and information has to be prominent in there too, that you know what company they work for. So my opinion is it has to be in your description of who you are. So when people click on it, because if you're going to do any social media advertising, so just stick with Facebook for now. Any social media advertised on your Facebook, it should be very easy for them to click on your, your uh, information, your uh, profile and say, this is Tony Geraci. He's an agent with Century 21 Homestar uh, broker. And this is his contact number. Here's his, his uh, office number. In theory, let me just tell you, I just catching this now. In theory... I'm even doing something wrong because I have my social media as Tony Geraci. My real estate license is Anthony Geraci. You are supposed to be advertising. See, I just caught myself in something that's been there. It should be Anthony Geraci, 
as my license states. Now, I know the Division of Real Estate, when it comes to nicknames and down names, they're very, 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 very lenient with it because it's close enough. But it, basically, you can't use a name, uh, something that they can't connect you with and find your license. So hopefully, Tony Geraci, Anthony Geraci, what company I work with, very easy for someone to find me with the Division of Real Estate um, on that. And then with posts of what you're posting on your Facebook, again, we'll stick with Facebook, you're supposed to be following all the fair housing laws, all of the things that you, uh, MLS rules and rules uh, that we have as realtors in advertising property and advertising yourself, just like anything else. And within reason, because there's, again, that's why I'm sticking with Facebook because there's plenty of text you could put into stuff. You could add everything to uh, a post. Uh, you, it connects with your, your uh, profile. So there's plenty of ways to make sure you follow all the rules. Other social media, a little different when you're just like Instagram, you're just posting a photo. You got I'm trying to make sure everything's included in that. Uh, Twitter, uh, there's a limit to how many characters you could put in there. So uh, there's different other social medias that you got to try to make sure there's links back to things because there's a limit of how much you can do in there. But you can make sure in Facebook that you follow the rules with posting. Now, also uh, a big thing going to like MLS rules and the, our uh, NAR rules with uh, listing homes. It is very, very clear, clear. And this is a big uh, industry issue right now uh, in some agents in marketing properties. It's, a, it's very clear that we have a 24-hour National Association of Realtors clear cooperation policy. So this is my opinion, disclaimer, my opinion, my thoughts, my views on how I interpret this rule. <laughs> because even laws, I always tell this agent, well, how, why isn't it 100% clear? Because laws, why do we have lawsuits? Uh, we, uh, you know, There's lawsuits out there because someone interprets a contract or a situation different than someone else. That's if you have two parties that just really are believe themselves. And we do this, and this happens in real estate all the time with contracts. You know, we have to, a buyer that thinks, no, I, I wanted them to fix it this way. And the seller goes, no, I, it just says fix it and it's fixed. You ever had that situation before? Well, this is kind of similar to this situation with that. My opinion, it says, if you cannot market a home for sale, uh, a property for sale, market it to the public without getting it into the multiple listing service within 24 hours. Now, here's the gray areas that some agents are doing. They're putting it on their uh, Facebook or their social media. I got a house coming on even sometimes they go so-and-so street or neighborhood in this city, but they don't put a, photo, a picture of the photo or uh, anything about the property specifically. And they go, oh, I could do that. Say, I got a listing coming up next week in this city. Well, why, am I, what, why are you doing that? Why are you doing that? Well, I want to market the home, get some buzz about it. They're marketing the home. You're marketing it. Well, I didn't say the house. Well, then what are you marketing? Well, a potential listing that hasn't come up yet. Well, the whole uh, essence of the rule is to not give anybody else a head start. So everybody has clear cooperation on it. Now, that's my interpretation of the rule. You shouldn't be marketing anything online about something coming, something maybe coming or whatever, without you putting, you know, being that's going to be in the MLS within 24 hours or our MLS in Northeast Ohio is 48 hours. It's kind of different from the rule of the NER, but I like the, you know, one business day rule. So I try to tell our agents as much as possible. I know there's a gray area is that just follow that rule. Now, the other thing too, there could be, and I will 
bet my bo a bottom dollar that someday this will happen, that there's fair housing issues. There's fair housing issues. We look at Facebook sometimes as not uh, as, as public. Facebook is Facebook. Um, I'm sorry if I'm hopefully my There we go. Okay. My phone, for some reason, picked up my AirPods. So hopefully that's not the case right now. So um, back to fair housing. Facebook's not public. The people, when you advertise on Facebook, remember you're only advertising, depending upon your settings, your friends. You're just telling your friends about a listing. My opinion, not an attorney, but as a broker, my experience, that could be a fair housing violation. You're only telling the people you want to tell about a property for sale and not being open to the complete public. You're, you're hand picking the people you want to know about this property. Could be a fair housing issue. I think someday that will happen. I think there's going to be, if there's not already, could be a, a lawsuit out there in civil court about fair housing, about someone, especially in this market, trying to buy a house in a certain area, and they seem to never, for some reason, find these houses listed or for sale before they get sold. That could be a fair housing. So to our agents, especially our, any agent, my opinion as a broker, my semi-legal opinion of not being an, uh, an attorney, but always being cautious, being a broker and owner of a, an office, of doing things correctly is that could be some legal liability in there if you post something on your Facebook about a listing and then you and then you have conversations in your chat with people like hey I'll get you in there soon or I'll let you know I'll direct message you later when I see agents say hey I'll send me a direct message or I'll send them a direct message my spidey senses go up. I'm like, what are you talking about behind everybody's back? Are you doing saying stuff that you're not should be saying? So I have had agents actually say, yeah, I just I told them, oh, just call me directly. Don't want to post that in the public. If you don't want to say something to the public, what are you saying in private that could might be potentially violating fair housing or get you into a legal situation on that and again knock on wood it never happens to you and a lot of agents are doing things that they just don't know like example with the prominent realtor um uh your company name being prominent every day every day i see i drive around different parts of town seeing uh, yard signs with agents information i have no idea and i'm a broker and, and i should know every agent in the in our market and what company they work for i can't even figure out what company they're with but that's more of a law like a licensed law i of course feel strongly that fair housing laws you know there's laws or laws and either way but some things are really more serious you know giving people all people of anywhere uh, from anywhere any part of the country or world that has the financial ability to buy a particular property should have the ability to see it or have the ability to hopefully see things come up in a market so they can buy so they can move to an area. So that's the essence of fair housing to make sure there's we're not discriminating against people. It's not just people that we can see or talk to. This could be even, in my opinion, people how access to see marketing. So again, years ago it was very, we'll say simple, is that it, most people knew that if you wanted to go to a certain area, uh, they're the only person that you look in the paper, you call up local real estate offices, you got to go drive around. And it was very easy or hard, we'll say, to market properties globally to everybody. So it was very hard to market, but also very easy. That's why there was fair housing issues. Uh, very easy for them to just say, okay, we're just going to sell to uh, clients with agents in an office in the same city. 
So what would happen? Just the same people in the same area would buy houses and there would be no diversity and people moving in from other areas because there's always just going to the office. But today, with how easy technology is, how easy it is accessible to everybody and with websites, with as easy as putting it on and any agent and anybody could uh, familiar with uh, a computer could go on realtor.com or Zillow or call any agent in any city, realtor in any city and say, hey, I want to look for houses in Cleveland, Ohio. What are they going to say? Go to our website, uh, like century21.com has all the homes in the country basically on there. Every major brand, every realtor.com, Zillow, every major website, or you can point them to agents in an area. So with all of that ease, with all of that ease of technology, all the things that's holding that information back is the agent or the company or both of who has that listing and how they're going to market it. It's as simple as that. So my standing on my soapbox to agents out there that watch this or see this or if you even want to talk to other agents in your office or where you're at is that let's give everybody full cooperation our whole backbone of our real estate and realtors uh if the consumer felt that using an agent one a certain agent or a certain agent at a certain company a certain agent and a certain area, a certain agent somewhere, they would be at a disadvantage to buy a house in a certain area would hurt our business. It would hurt your business, every agent's business. If they lost confidence in using agents to help them purchase, all agents are just trying to figure out who, because there's still people out there that go, I'm going to call the listing agent directly because that gives me a better opportunity to buy the house. There's people out there like that. If they lose confidence, it might uh, start the buyer's agent's job and what some of the things they bring to the table might fall, you know, with the confidence of the consumer that hurts our industry in general to that. So today, you know, I was kind of just sticking a little bit of a fair housing specific to that. But um, one thing else I want to tackle uh, before we end this is is uh, I'm gonna, I'm trying to tread on this this topic lately uh, because when it came out with the National Association of Realtors, uh, I had several agents contact me upset about this 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 rule. But the essence of the rule is, is that there is and uh, and I'm going to butcher up the exact name of it. But basically, the the National Association of Realtors has a, a rule now is that they can determine if your uh, it's more of like hate and bullying or hate crimes or uh, things like that. If as if one of our members, a realtor member, is posting things that are can be extremely, I mean, I, I throw in extremely hurt, hurtful or, uh, or or racist or discriminatory or anything of poor ethics or uh, if you if you follow me with that, is that uh, they have a right to terminate you as being a realtor. So, so the point of the, the rule is, and, and not good way we haven't seen it. I haven't seen a case. I haven't seen any agents get kicked out. I haven't seen any, I get the Realtor Magazine every month uh, from Real, the National Association of Realtors. I get OAR, the Ohio Association of Realtors. I get all of these. I get National uh, RIS, uh, RAS Media. I get Inman News. I get bombarded every day because I sign up for everything industry related possible so as a broker i could be on top of things all the time anything new anything's happening legal things what's happening around the country but this rule was and again of course it came out right after the election was because a lot of agents 
all different. I'm not even gonna make anything specific, really. Any agents were were getting were were being videoed of doing uh, racist things. Uh, they were uh, bullying people. I, you know, I remember seeing terrible, terrible vi uh, uh, videos of people saying things to people and uh, doing things to people. And then they found out and they had them on video and found out they were realtors. Uh, and you know, you've seen some of these videos of these people out there, not just realtors that caught on camera, they found out their job found out that they said these things, did these things and fired them. So I think that was the essence of the rule for the National Associated Realtors that they were going to, if they got complaints about people and they were really that big of a deal. But the realtors that called me, I totally understand, were worried they, and want to know my take on it. We're worried that, oh my gosh, the Division of Realtors can, uh, uh, or National Associated Realtors can censor us and our free speech. Well, in theory, um, when you're our board of realtors, we're a union. We have, we're a union. We're actually the largest union in the country, the National Association of Realtors Union. We have members, we have rules, we have ethics, we have things we have to follow. And if our, our, our uh, union comes up with certain ethical things, rules, you have a right as a member to to them and fight it but i think the essence of it was in a good way and i haven't seen it have to be used but i think it's there to show the public that if we if one of our members does something extremely bad that we can kick them out i think that's what they wanted they wanted the out they wanted the out to be able to kick people out of our board of realtors and if you're not a realtor then there's you're limited to MLS access, you're limited to things. That's why a majority of us are realtors because there's a benefit behind it. I wanna go, that's a whole nother video <laughs> of all the benefits of being a realtor. Uh, there's a lot, it's good, it's all good. There's no, uh, the, the amount of pros way out seed any cons, I think in our real estate industry of being realtors, that's my personal opinion, you know, before we go into that. But, the point I was explaining that is that you got to watch what you say. It, you can, it, you know, uh, hopefully anybody watching this or any realtor out there, or anybody, would, you know, nothing would make me happier that everybody is, is complete ethical, loves everybody, doesn't want to treat anybody poorly, doesn't want to put anybody down, doesn't want to do anything or say anything that would be uh, racist or, or discriminatory. But the National Association of Realtors uh, has this rule that if you, you tr try to say anything you want, if you're one of those people like, I want to be able to say anything I want, no matter if it's horrible. If you want to say horrible things, you might not be a realtor anymore. It, it's just because you're part of a group. And as a group, if we all agree or vote or our peoples we put in charge of our, our union, put these rules in, we got to follow them uh, or we get kicked out and we don't, we're not members anymore. And then it limits us. So think about that. And of course, uh, any sense to bring Homestar Realtors, I'm always here. Brenda, Debbie, uh, Julia, Carly will do our best. We all stay up to date as many of the rules and laws and how to post things and how listings have to be uh, written and what can be said and what can't be said. We do our best. Always check with us if you're unsure. If we're unsure, we'll point you to the Ohio uh, Division of Realtors or uh, Ohio Association of Realtors hotline if you want to double check that just to be safe it's always better to be safe than sorry uh on on these matters so so that's it for today thank you for being here sorry mike wasn't here hopefully i was almost as exciting as mike uh, <laughs> so when mike's watched this give him a good uh, thumbs up for that so so that's it for today thanks for joining us thanks for watching and we'll see you next week have a good one Bye-bye. <laughs>